Well, I wasn't happy with the video that I did on the, uh, on the isolator. Um, we measured it at a frequency that was way lower than its specification. And I said that was um, because I didn't have the test equipment to do, to do the right test. And I started thinking about it and I said, well, I do have enough test equipment to test it. Um, sometimes you have to be a little bit inventive. But I've showed this before and I, you know, I should watch my own videos and say, hey, you know, you could have done blah, 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 blah. So let me show you how we can measure this at a higher frequency, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, test it at 2.7 gigahertz. Um, it's actually 2750, 2750 gigahertz, uh, 2.75 gigahertz, I'm sorry, 2750 megahertz. Um, and so my spectrum analyzer, though, only goes to 18, 1.8 gigahertz. So that's not going to work. Um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a mixer, okay? And so I'm using my HP 8921 to generate uh, one gigahertz. So I have one gigahertz reference coming into the uh, mixer. So one gigahertz coming in and uh, uh, 2.75 coming in, I should get 1.75 going out. Uh, mix it down. And so, indeed, we are getting uh, a spike out here. Now, when you use mixers, you're going to get a bunch of uh, harmonics and stuff that you mixer mixer products and stuff that you need to you need to be you need to know of. But for this particular case, we don't care. We just care about the amplitude of that particular one there. So we'll do a uh, we'll do a peak search on uh, on this one. We'll move it to the center. And so there we go. It should be at uh, 1750 megahertz. We'll put the center at 1750 and sure enough it is. And so that is the 2.75 mixed down to 1.75. And uh, if we come over here uh, to the generator and I'm going to change to uh, 2.74 and 2.76, Here's 2.74, here's 2.76. So you see we're measuring, we're measuring the right thing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to, first let me explain where the device is in the circuit. So the device is in the circuit, oops, down here, uh, is on the output. So we're going through the isolator, okay? And so we'll measure how much power we get out of that. And then I'm going to turn this around and then we'll measure how much we get out. Okay. So let's go over here and do that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do marker to reference level. So what that does is it takes the peak of that signal and puts it right at the very top of the screen. Okay. Very, very easy. I wish they would add that button to, uh, to the tiny SA because it's very, very valuable. It's so valuable that it's actually the second function in this generator, right? The first function is move the, move the uh, marker to the center frequency. The very next thing is move the marker to the reference level. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm just connecting the wrong connector here. Okay. Okay, what I'm doing here off camera is I'm turning the... Uh... Here, I'll show, I'll show you what I'm doing. It's not a magic trick. <laughs> I can show what I do. Okay, so I'm going to do the uh, uh, isolator in backwards, so it should reject uh, signals in this direction. Okay, so now we have everything in there. Okay, and let's see how we did. And you can see our signal is much, much, much smaller now. In fact, it's 10, 20, it's about 25 dB down, right? So this is a great isolator. It's knocking it down by 25 dB. Um, so very, very nice. So like I said, um, generally isolators are somewhere around the 20 dB, you know, 18 to 20 dB of rejection is usually what their specification is, but this is a very nice one. Um, it's knocking the signal down by uh, um, 25 dB. Like I said, I couldn't find the data sheet on uh, I couldn't find the data sheet on these on these devices, so I, I really don't know 
what they were designed for. All I can do is judge by its size. Generally, the ones that are lower frequencies uh, are, are bigger, okay? And they get smaller and smaller as the frequencies go up because you need less and less uh, magnetism, I guess. I'm not sure. Or just the, the little racetrack gets smaller. I, I, I don't know. But uh, in this particular size, I've seen these anywhere from 2 gigahertz to 10 gigahertz kind of range. Uh, maybe even up to 18 gigahertz, but you know, something, something, something along those lines. And I had guessed it was a 4 gigahertz coupler. Um, but it's operating very, very well at uh, 2.7 gigahertz. So uh, uh, if it is a 4 gigahertz coupler, it's 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 conservatively um, it conservatively marked. It might be a, it might be a 2 to 4 gigahertz or a 2 to 8 gigahertz uh, isolator. Um, it's it's operating very, very well. So anyway, so I'm happy now. I've actually made the real measurement that I should have made in that first uh, in that first video. Yeah, it's 25 dB rejection. Uh, it's doing a great job. So. Uh, it's conceivable I might have use for this in the future, but uh, yeah, definitely hang on to it. It's a nice, uh, nice thing to have. And it's about the, oop, oh man, sorry about that. <laughs> Everybody fall off the edge. Um, it's about the right size of all those other little RF boxes I made. It's about a one inch by one inch uh, little box here. So anyway, there you go. New measurement.